Spark is averaging more assists per set than Pedraza did last year. Just a little reference point for you. She really is able to construct this offense so well for the Nittany Lions. These teams just about ready for first serve. It will belong to Northwestern. The Cats in white, the Nittany Lions in blue. Let's have a night on this Friday evening. No better place to be with some Big Ten volleyball action. Talk about a Northwestern team coming off playing Nebraska. Now you play Penn State. This is just what the Big Ten is. That Nebraska game was the first sellout here at Welsh Ryan Arena for this Northwestern volleyball program. A good turnout here tonight with the number three ranked team in the country on hand. Excited to have you along the ride. Cats and Lions, let's get to it. Rousseau to get things going for the Wildcats. 17 aces on this season. We are underway in WRA. Stark sets up on the near side. Hannah caught the touch. Nittany Lions strike first. And you're going to see a lot of Jess Merzik's night, but you're also going to see a lot of Cameron Hannah averaging 3.4 kills per set. Another dangerous option for this Penn State attack. So here's a look at Jillian Grimes, the libero for this Penn State squad. Looking at her pregame, had one of the most powerful serves on the floor. And there's some power by Catherine Randorf, dug up well by Faldudo. Here's Hill from the middle, picking up kill number one. And especially without Sophia Summers available again, you've got to get Kendi Hill going offensively. That time goes to the middle for Northwestern. And when Kendi Hill has the time and space in the middle, so dangerous in that part of the court. Rylan Reed. Coming off the bench in to serve. Caught the tape. Valdudo's getting an early workout. But nothing that Taylor Trammell can't handle in the middle. 2-1, Lions. And that's a tough play for Ryland Reed, trying to keep that one up. Diving to her right. Just too much power to keep that play alive. When we get a moment, we look at Izzy Stark on to serve. Older sister watching on the bench, Angelina. She'll be on the floor sooner rather than later. For the Cats, Randorf trying to beat the block. Penn State has a chance in system. Jura Vicious gets her first kill of the night. And what makes this Penn State offense so lethal is they can attack you from either side of the court. It really doesn't matter. They've got so much talent on either side. That time goes far side for Jura Vicious. Looking at what Northwestern's been able to do against these ranked teams this year, opening sets are their best friend. Not off to the best start tonight as they take advantage of an overpass. Yeah, and the, the one set they took against Purdue, that was in the opening set against, uh, against a ranked Purdue team. This is a Northwestern team that struggled against ranked competition, especially in Big Ten play. Rousseau setting up Randorf on the near side, and there's Randorf's first kill. They've gone to her three times. She finally breaks through. And that time you go off the block. And you know what? Sometimes when you hit it hard, it doesn't matter about the de defensive positioning for, for the Nittany Lions. Something Randorf really has. When she gets going, that, that arm swing, really talented. Now Kennedy Hill back to serve for the Cats. Not typical for her as she just picked up her fourth error on the year. Yeah, and she's only been kind of serving these past couple matches you know, this Northwestern team, trying to find a rhythm. Obviously, Sophia Summers was, was serving for a little bit, found some success against Iowa, not in the lineup. Kendi Hill gets an opportunity. That one, too far. And on a standing still serve, right at Gigi Navarrete. Opens the door for Hazan to swing, and a nice shoulder up from Griffith to keep it alive to allow Buse Hazan a second chance, and she gets the kill. Yeah, Hazan led this Northwestern team in kills against Nebraska, eight for her, and she's someone that if you can get going if you're Northwestern, I mean, you know, 15, 20 kills, not out of the question. She's got that kind of talent. She's just been kind of in and out in terms of consistency so far this year. We welcome Lauren Carter to the floors. The former Denver Pioneer is on to serve for the Wildcats. Makes it tough for Merzik. Vicious goes right at Carter. And here come the Cats with Alexa Rousseau. And she does what she does best. That's kill number 145 on the year. Yeah, imagine saying that before this season. You imagine Alexa Rousseau with 145 kills. You know, last year as a, as a true setter, you'd see her maybe go over on two, get some kills here and there. But it's being asked to really attack way more often, especially in this offense. Merzik off the tip. Good reaction by Carter to keep it alive. Rousseau takes the swing, and Grimes is there. Merzik again. 
too much heat on that one. Yeah, if Jess Merzik's getting two opportunities in for, for a point, it's most likely gonna go Penn State's way just with her ability. Really nice job on the first try, just to kind of give a different speed, goes off speed, and then that time went with the power. Now Taylor Tremel, who at the top of the conference in terms of hitting percentage, gives a good serve. And it's Mendelssohn and Jura Vicious on the block to get Penn State ahead 7-4. Yeah, and before this match, you know, they, they were working in terms of their timing uh, with that block. You saw them warm up together um, and get, get some of those jumps in and that time working out to perfection. You see how far back Trammell takes those serve and still gets it deep in Northwestern zone. Hazan underneath it, denied down. Three chances at the net for the Cats to keep it alive. They don't do so. And Penn State's starting to take the life out of this Northwestern crowd early on. Yeah, and they're playing well on both sides. Defensively really stout, offensively getting to their playmakers, but that time Northwestern just unable to, to grasp possession. So you get a good server like Trammell, you're gonna be coming up with just some errors. That's her fifth on the season. And now for Northwestern, good to have Bute Hazan at the service line. Somebody that the most service aces on the team, uh, a player that's really able to, to, to put the ball in some dangerous areas. Enters the night with 23, but commits her first error of the evening. Service errors were a huge name of the game last week when Northwestern played the Fighting Illini of Illinois, where the first 10 points of the game went down without a single kill and everything coming off of a service ace or error. As Ava Faldudo looks to break that streak, she does successfully. Here's Reed off the tip. Good reaction there by Angelina Stark, and Merzik picks up the kill. It's just beautiful placement on, in, in the back row there. Drew Wright's trying to get over to it. Who's is on a little bit late to, to go over, and it's just right in between both of them in that back row. 10-5 Nittany Lions out in front here in the opening set. Tough pass for Northwestern to get through. And the Lions extend their lead. And it's just a really awkward play for Lauren Carter there. Sarah Griffith unable to cleanly read it off of uh, Carter's touch, and the ball falls down. Seems a little sloppy right now from this Northwestern side. The piece for, for Penn State definitely favoring the Nittany Lions. Lily Wagner committing an overpass her first time on the floor. Merzik cleans it up for her third kill of the night. It's going to be the easiest one she's going to have all night. Just easiest play for her in terms of player of that power and, and, and that stature. It's on a silver platter for her in that situation. Service error committed by Faldudo, ends the 4-0 run. And now the Wildcats side out. But not after starting to bleed a little bit more. A good run put together by Faldudo in this Lions service game. Now Northwestern's libero drew right. Goes to her libero counterpart in Grimes. And Stark from the back row feeds Carter. Here's Rousseau. Good spot. Gets the kill, that's Rousseau's second. She's averaging just over two kills per set in Big Ten play. Already has two here tonight in set number one, and that's a play where she's not trying to hammer the ball. She understands where the defense is, just gives it a little love tap, and puts it in play. Wildcat deficit is currently five. Mendelssohn tried to make it six, but she got denied. Here's Reed on the far side, got the tip. And Merza keeps it up. A good dump from Izzy Stark, but Carter was there. Rousseau off the tape. Got over a couple heads, but sent back over. Good joust won by Rousseau. Here comes Merzik. Dug out by Wright. Stark ends the point. What a little back and forth run there. Just ball ended up falling to the Penn State side. But how about Alexa Rousseau, the effort there to, to, to win that joust, to not get out of the play give Northwestern a chance, it ends up falling on Penn State's side just as the way that this first set has kind of gone. It feels like Penn State's gotten the bounces. You could feel the energy surge in the crowd every time Northwestern made a dig, and although they didn't win that point, so they have another tough ball here. Crowd's right back in, and it's a good turnout on this Friday night. Here's Ryland Reed. Picks up the kill. That ball was set in our way. Yeah, I thought you were going to make a play there, send it back. Just came off the, the top of the table here. But that's, that's kind of how Northwestern's gonna have to play. It's not gonna look the same point in and point out. You've gotta keep this Penn State defense on their toes. That time it's Ryland Reed on the far side, goes cross court. 
Rousseau has had an active night near the front of the net. Joust won by Hill, and the Cats are down four. And that's a place where Northwestern really needs to win. They're so good at the net. It's probably their strongest place on both ends, especially defensively. And when you've got Stark and, 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 and Kennedy Hill, you'll, you'll take Kennedy Hill if you're Northwestern in that situation every single time. Stark setting up Hannah. Couldn't even blink before that ball hit the floor. Just lightning. Cameron Hannah, I mean, that's what she does. And obviously, Jess Merzik gets most of the clout. But in, in, in terms of Cameron Hanna, just such another talented player. This Penn State offense, it's just so many strong arms, so many places where you can get kills from. So many directions to open up the attack. But we mentioned the power on Grimes' serve. That one comes back to Bider. She commits the error there. And Eli, you kind of talked about it earlier, but we were watching Grimes warm up, and her serve is just filthy. It feels like there's so much power there. Definitely, definitely more of a risk-reward kind of player. That time, that one just goes out of bounds. Hannah again, right off the tip. Hazan back on the floor. Couldn't find it that time, and a little messy play dug out well by Hazan. Randorf on the near side, caught the touch. Point Northwestern. That's such a great play by Alexa Russo to back set there, rather than pushing it to the far side. Just making Penn State's defense come over there a little late, goes off the block, that's a Northwestern point. Nice job by Randorf to get that one down. Three point set. The Cats trying to come back in it. What a powerful serve there from Reed. Penn State returning the favor with Trammell in the middle. Yeah, and just that back row so far for Northwestern. Defensively been a little shaky at, at times. That time, Drew Wright just unable to quite get there. It was in between her and Reed. As Success of Cameron Hanna and Jess Merzik. Three kills apiece. And Izzy Stark sitting active in the assist game. She's already got seven. She's on to serve right now. Makes it tough for Hazan. And she'll take this swing. Got it through. Northwestern answers well out of the timeout. And talk about a balanced attack for Northwestern so far. Already four players with two kills. Hazan just joined that club with Randorf, Kendi Hill, and Alexa Russo. 15-12 the score now with Kennedy Hill to serve for the Cats. Already committed an error in this set. It's a good serve there. Juravicious forcing one past the block. And a bump set from Navarrete to Hazan. Through the block, point Northwestern. And if you're Taylor Trammell in that situation, you probably wish you could have done a little bit better. That, that ball from Jose Hazan, not super powerful. It probably should have been able to control it a little better at the net. And in case you were keeping score at home, I did make a play on that ball. Another good serve from Hill with a two-point set. Makes it three. Good swing from Cameron Hanna on the slide. Yeah, this Penn State offense just looks like a well-oiled machine. And I mean, there's a reason they've won 14 matches in a row. It's because, because stuff like this, early on the road, looks clean. Mentioned that 14-game win streak. Their only loss this season was to the number one team in the country, the Pitt Panthers. And that was came to a sweep. As they pick up a touch and a kill here. Nittany Lions starting to stretch that lead a little bit more and continue this incredible momentum they've been able to put together since the end of September. That's truly nuts. Fifth longest winning streak in the nation. But service errors don't help you get to the finish line. Keeps the Cats in it. It's a three-point set. Yeah, and if you're the Cats, I mean, you've got to take advantage of every opportunity you can. Obviously, a service error for Penn State's going to be huge for your momentum, but you've got to be able to claw back in, find a way to cut this to two, find a way to cut it to one. Carter serves for the Cats. Into the net. Service error is starting to pile up. That's the seventh combined here in set one. Yeah, Penn State already with four. Northwestern now with three. And especially if you're a Northwestern team going up against a team with as much quality as Penn State has, it's those service errors. It's those uh, mental miscues and mental mistakes that really hurt your chances. Kate Lally comes on the State College native. She serves away and her service run ends short with the violation committed by the Nittany Lions. Point Northwestern. Eighteen fifteen. Penn State is a team hitting 480, but these errors are really keeping Northwestern in it. 
And now Hazan makes it a tough serve. Here's Merzik. Kill number four. It's truly incredible. It doesn't matter if she's not super clean off the jump. It doesn't matter where really the ball is. She's always able to find a way to, to get it past the block. That time goes over Rousseau, who's, who was in that defensive position for Northwestern. And it wasn't super powerful, just once again, good placement. That's what Jess Merzik does. Reed has some good placement, but a better dig from Grimes. Wright calling the bump set. They're going back to Ryland Reed, and she finds the back row. Could not have put it in a better spot. Ryland Reed finding that back corner. Jeez, that was put perfectly. Still anybody set here in the opening stages? Drew Wright trying to keep the Cats into a smaller deficit. Mendelssohn, quick tip. Opens the door for Rousseau. Goes cross court, but Faldudo's there. Merzik goes right to right, and Rousseau sends it over. Impressive back row play from Northwestern so far, but a great answer from Grimes, and Rousseau puts it away to a roar of this Welsh Ryan crowd. I mean, Alexa Rousseau is playing so well tonight. She's really got that feel for the game right now. But can we just talk about that dig from Grimes? Doing the splits, keeping it up, Northwestern still finds a way. Wow, what a first set of action here we have in Edmondson. A lot more on hand. That one getting away from <laughs> Merzik, but she's able to save it before it running into us. Can't regather on the floor, point Northwestern. But although it's a great effort to keep that alive, it's a one point set. It's tight here. I mean, it, it, like, it's these tiny plays on the side. I mean, just as it comes crashing into, into the table here. You know, you, you had a similar uh, situation last week, didn't you? Oh, I'm bringing back nightmares. I saw everything flash before my eyes there. As that slide gets shut down, Northwestern is tied set number one. And talk about resilience. You can start to feel the energy in this arena. Timeout Penn State now. The crowd starts to get into it. Alexa Rousseau, massive smile on her fist. Four straight points for Northwestern will hold things here as we sit in this energy that Northwestern's crowd has brought to the table tonight. So much to unpack so far as we take a look at our coaches. First with Katie schumacher Collie inheriting this program was But here in set number one against the number three ranked team in the country, tied in the closing stages. Drew Wright looks to keep this service run going. Stark looking to get the point back for the Lions as they roll it with Merzik. Here's Hill. Cats lead. Just huge there. That's a that's a mistake there on the back side by, by Stark. Really should have that ball and keep, keep it up. But a lucky break for Northwestern. And early in the set, the balls were falling Penn State's way. Now things are starting to fall Northwestern's way. First team to 20. Liberos. Staying hot from the service line, makes it tough. There's an ace. And once again, it's stark on the back side for Penn State, unable to come up with a play. You wonder if Northwestern here, Drew Wright still at the service line, obviously. Does she go back to Stark on that back row? The seventh straight serve for Wright. Another tough one right at Grimes, but Merzik looks to keep it back going, but Northwestern's defense is answering well. So is Jillian Grimes. Merzik again. That's the kill she's been looking for, and that was an angry swing from Jeff Merzik. Yeah, that was a mean swing. That was, uh, I was supposed to get a kill a couple a couple points ago. I got to get one back in the kill column. Puts her up to now five on the evening. You mentioned that for her fifth kill. Taking 14 swings to get there, but it's still the way Penn State wants to go. One ball swing. Good block to get Penn State back to a tied first set at 21. And we talk about momentum all the time, but especially in a first set as tight as this one has been, Merzik gets the kill, puts Penn State 21-20, and then Northwestern unable to get it back across. Now the Cats have to call timeout with it tied. It's that quick. It's, it's a flip of a coin. That's how quick the momentum can change. First timeout called by Tim Nolan. We'll step aside with him. 21 all here in the opening set. Remember to keep a lot of the match, especially when your cats get a block, because you're one step closer to free. 
Northwestern can get there. And this is a Penn State team that last time against Iowa uh, lost the first set at home, too. They've had some troubles, especially starting matches. Can Northwestern capitalize? Another overpass. Mendelssohn commits the attacking error, though. A golden opportunity thrown away, and it's tied again. And you feel like in a situation like that, Mendelssohn at 6'5", middle blocker right in the middle. Do you like her chances uh, in that situation? Just a little too much mustard on it, and we've got another tied set here. It's Rousseau back to serve for the Cats. Opened up the night serving. And they go back to Hannah. It is blocked well. From the back row, Merzik dug out exceptionally by Wright. Reed trying to break through and good reflexes from Hannah. Mendelssohn kicks the kill. Had the error on her last swing, makes up for it right there. And Penn State's two points away from leaving this first set victorious. Yeah. Buse Hazan playing defense there on the back side. Just a little too slow getting over to her left. It, it feels like that ball wasn't hit super hard. Uh, you probably would have liked to see if she was able to get there quicker, but just unable to come up with it. And uh, Penn State back in front by one. Might as well use it while you have it. Tim Nolan spends his last time out. We'll take us another small break. 23-22 the score. The finish is set one coming up. Set here between Northwestern and Penn State. Jillian Grimes and the Nittany Lions trying to close things out and get themselves back on track to a 13th conference win. And keep their eyes ahead to tomorrow night with a premier matchup. But the set out of the timeout ends up on Penn State side of the floor and it's tied at 23. Yeah, Grimes trying to be aggressive there, trying to go low to the net and it catches the tape, doesn't have enough power to get over, rolls out of play. Western, lucky there. Stark sets up Merzik. She tips from the back row to no avail, but there's Kennedy Hill bringing the cast to set point. And time and time again, when Northwestern needs a point in a critical situation, they go from Rousseau, quick set to Kennedy Hill. It's just what Northwestern does in big moments. It's you can see if they can play some defense here, get, the, get another chance, and then put it back. The chance to win the set right here. How does Penn State get away from it? They can't! Into the block! Hill gets it done, and Northwestern comes away with set number one, 25-23. Absolutely huge. Kennedy Hill gets the set kill, or, or gets the kill to make it 24-23, then the block to make it 25-23. Huge play by the Cats here. Their first set win against a ranked team in over a month. 25-23 the score after set number one. Cats looking to keep it rolling here with a raucous crowd on hand. Kills all over the board, power on both sides. If set number one is any indication of what we have in store for the rest of this one, strap in. It's going to be a fun ride here on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back to Evanston, Illinois. Northwestern takes the first set 25-23, and Alexa Russo was just fantastic in that first set for the Wildcats. 
helped the Cats on a 3 0 scoring run to, to close things out. But talk about three kills, five assists, was doing just a little bit of everything and what she's done all season long for this Northwestern squad on both ends, both defensively, offensively, They're truly the heart and soul of this Northwestern team. So we get back to action here. Angelina Stark to get things going for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Stark gets us back into play here in set number two. Rylan Reed likes to keep the good times rolling. You're gonna have to wait on that one. But the block party's still in effect. Good call by Rylan Reed, calling it out. Northwestern strikes first in set number two. And clearly this momentum that, you know, we've, we've mentioned a couple times, it's it's gone to Northwestern. They've won the last four points, trailing back to that last set. But how can they keep that energy up? Obviously, this is a long match. A lot of volleyball left to be played. Good serve off the tape. Greater up from Merzik. Here's Hill from the middle. Another good up. Into the block, but Rousseau keeps it alive. Great team effort, but there's the block effort from Penn State. Trammell and Merzik get up there. It's a nice job by Penn State to, to get one back, cut that little bit of that momentum out. Now you've got Grimes back to the service line. Top 10 in the Big Ten in the Aces. Um, somebody that can really get an offense kickstarted. Already committed a couple errors in the first set. Avoids trouble that time. And there's Mendelssohn into the block. Kennedy Hill continuing to heat up. And she's truly a player that when she gets one big play or, or two big plays in a row, it completely changes the outcome of how she's able to perform. Obviously had the kill when it was 23-23 to make it 24-23, and then the big block. Miscommunication, trying to find Jura Vicious, but point goes to Northwestern. They go back to Hill to serve. And it's a tough reception for Stark. The run keeps going for the Cats. They lead 4-1. Yeah, and the vibes are just fantastic, especially on the bench. I mean, the Western bench is always so vocal, always so into it. But you hear talk about the clapping, talk about the energy. It's really translating to the court. You look at the other side, Penn State. And, and, and this is a this is a squad. It's currently a little bit of longer faces as another mistake by the Nittany Lions. Another ace continues to find the scoreboard for the Cats. That's their fourth ace of the night. And you wonder how Penn State wants to use its timeouts. Obviously, with this Northwestern momentum, this Northwestern run, another three nothing score and run. Obviously, taking five of the six points in this set so far. There's a quick uh, call for a timeout at some point. So that may be the break that the Nittany Lions needed. They get Hill off the service line, committing the error. And now they have the chance to dictate the pace here in the early stages of set two. Yeah, and if you're Penn State, you need a, you need a big play. You need an offensive boost. And uh, in a situation where you need to get some of that momentum back, I think Jess Merzik is, is the player you go to. Tough reception for Randorf. Wright keeps it alive, but there's no one to cover the net. Yeah, I think it was Alexa Rousseau was in that area, but she didn't quite know where she was, quite where the net was either. Maybe thought that that ball was going to get over. Also, have Sarah Griffith, who, while has made the last three starts now for the Wildcats, severely lacking the amount of playing time throughout the rest of the season. This is on, unloads a huge swing there. And then can't dig out the one from Merzik, picking up her sixth kill of the night. But looking at what Sarah Griffith has been able to do, it just, just doesn't have the, enough chemistry on the floor during real game reps to match with the rest of this team. And that's just something that's got to come with more time. Yeah, it's going to come with time. It's like asking uh, you know, somebody that hasn't, essentially someone that hasn't really played this season to, to play some of the biggest matches Northwestern's going to play the entire year. It's almost an impossible situation, and she's coping, she's in there. Seems maybe maybe a step slower than she'd like to be, but she, she's in there, and as these matches continue, and she gets a little bit more comfortable in this system, um, you're only going to see her improve. Spent most of her undergrad career at DePaul, currently with the Wildcats, and a good serve from Lauren Carter. Opens the door for the Cats in system. Here's Rousseau. Caught the block, also the tape. And Merzik 
gets Penn State back within one. But it's also tough from an offensive perspective, too, because it's one thing defensively, but Northwestern really likes to activate their middles on the offensive side, and, and Griffith isn't somebody that the Cats are really going to a lot, haven't really seen a, a quick set to her in the middle. And it, it's difficult to get into a rhythm if you're not getting necessarily as many offensive looks. That first ball from Hazan flirted with the scoreboard, stayed away from it. And now she takes the swing again and goes straight down with it. It's big time for Buse Hazan. Down the line, so powerful, so strong. And there's glimpses every once in a while where you're like, she, she is, has that kind of talent. And it's been the inconsistency for her so far this season, but shining again in a big moment. Maybe taking a look at this last point as the coach, as Tim Nolan calls his players for a huddle. Well, there's also a discussion going on on Penn State side of the floor, trying to unpack what's happening with the play, maybe checking out Maggie Mendelson. Yeah, she's a little slow to walk off as we've just halted here. Maybe a little shaken up after that last point. She's able to walk off the floor under her own power. And we'll have updates on Mendelssohn once we have them. And she'll get checked out on the bench. Welcoming on the floor, Jordan Hopp. Yeah, and Hopp's a player that's only appeared in five matches this season, only six sets. So talk about untested middle blocker. Um, that's somewhere Northwestern can really can really look at it and be like, how can we attack uh, that side of the floor? See if they go to her on this serve from Hazan. They go deep where Merzik's able to cover, and we'll see how early they get Hop involved in the attacking game. But Hamna got the touch near the net and gets the point for the Lions. Another interesting thing in terms of this Penn State squad, obviously when you're 22 and one, you're 12 and 0 in Big Ten play, a lot has gone right for you. But this is a moment of adversity, just like they played last time out against Iowa, lost the first set at home. How do you come back? How do you respond? We talked about Hop. She ends up coming off the floor there and on to serve was Quinn Manger. But how do you stop Jess Merzik, especially from those swings in the back row? She's up to seven kills on 22 swings already. Eli, the answer is you don't. She just she just does what she does. And if you're Northwestern, you kind of have to live with it a little bit. You've got you got to put yourself in good places defensively. You got to make life tough tough with her with good positioning up front in terms of the blocks. But uh, yeah, more often than not, she's going to get her way. Rousseau tries to get hers. We'll have to wait a little bit longer. Hannah got it too far underneath it, and the point goes to the Wildcats. And yeah, that was an awkward swing from Cameron Hanna. Realized the Northwestern's block was in a good position, tries to go cross court, but just a little bit behind and under the ball, kind of goes underneath it and, and out of bounds. It's a good play by Northwestern's defense to get in position, basically take away the, the ability to go down the line, forcing Hanna to, to go across the court. Drew Wright had a phenomenal service run near the end of set one. Can't muster up that energy here in the second, and it's tied at eight. I feel like it's a chance to breathe for both these teams, but it's so close. You've got to stay on edge. 8-8 eight, eight with Izzy Stark serving. Communication is evident on Northwestern side. As that block travels out, Cats regain the lead. It's the thinnest of margins on that on that far side. Looks like it, it just had been out of bounds. But no, the challenge coming. Challenge coming. I mean, from, from my perspective, I thought it might have touched the white line. You see a replay there. Penn State says, no, nah, that's in bounds. Northwestern says, no, nah, it's out of bounds. Classic, classic tell. Well, someone's going to get their way. Let's take another look as Kenny Schumacher colleague uses this chance as a timeout get her team back in it. Because right now they certainly don't look like the number three ranked team in the nation, but Northwestern's also done a good job scouting and taking advantage of their own opportunities. Yeah, and I think from a Penn State perspective, they haven't been as clean as they would have liked to be. You know, a, a team that's hitting 264 right now compared to Northwestern's 304. I'm sure we'll see that start to flip through the second set, definitely in the third set. It just Penn State, it, it's a better team than, than, a, than a 264 hitting percentage, a, a squad that on the season, 295. Here, here's that look as this ball gets very close to that white line. Definitely a case to say that one's in. Yeah, it looks like 
just that back end of the ball potentially could have been but it been in, but that's just razor thin margins. And Eli, that's why I don't get paid to make these decisions. Um, and I get to sit over here and be like, it could be in, could be out. It's up uh, to Chris Hayworth to make that decision. The other officials tonight, Al Cleary, Italian Bolton, and Scott Crox. And this point, the way this goes, determines who has the lead here in set number two after Northwestern used the energy they picked up from this crowd here tonight and rode it to a 25-23 win in set number one. Just a great feel here on this Friday night in terms of this crowd. You mentioned the, the sellout last time against Nebraska, but here just a couple days later, five days later, got another really strong crowd and obviously number three team in the country is going to help with with some of the turnout but it's just it's it's fun these big but in terms of the kills in terms of her athleticism has really transitioned that into a hey i'm gonna set these things up for my teammates from last year even the beginning of this year uh, started the season off really as more of a traditional setter and as the season's progressed has been asked to do more and more offensively look at what kennedy hill's reaction was immediately to that swing saying you put it on her head and she Quite literally did. Fresh off that kill, Rousseau is a good serve. Hannah with a better swing. And that's just great placement again, right in between Rousseau and, and Hazan on that back side. And it's just right in between them, a tough play in terms of if, if you don't move to it first. Um, maybe a little bit of miscommunication there, but that, that's just so much power. Tough reception for Hill. Northwestern Wildcats are all over the place trying to send it back over. Off the touch, Penn State leads by two. Yeah, and you start to feel like Penn State's found something with these last couple points coming out of uh, the challenge. Now lead by two. Northwestern adjusting things defensively for the, the serve. And doesn't matter anyway, it's an ace for Cameron Hanna. Just the second ace of the night for Penn State. Northwestern got, has four. And you gotta wonder if, if Hanna goes back to Randorf here. That's the way she goes with it, and it's a lot cleaner for Randorf. She takes the swing, and it hang, hung off that net for just enough time for Stark to get there. Tip at the net. You gotta like that aggressiveness that Northwestern's blocking him is bringing, but they're not getting enough of the ball to make it competitive for their back row. And I think Tim Nolan was confused about that. He goes over to his players and asks, was there a tip there? And they were like, yeah, so no challenge there. So 13-9 Penn State. They've scored four in a row. Reed looks to end that, and does. It's a really nice try by by Hannah to just try and keep that alive, but too much power by the Cats. Rylan Reed, when she gets a full head of steam, it's so much power in that swing. So with the Cats down three, Merzik swings and kills. Randorf a little shaken up at that battle of the net. She looks to be up and okay. And Merzik went right over to her just to make sure she was okay. So definitely an inadvertent collision, and you'll have those situations at the net. Tim Nolan's telling her to go take a seat, just get checked out. But no, she's going to come back in. Either way, Navarrete subs in for Reed. So take another look at what ended in that last play. Just both players converging at the net. Just unfortunate positioning, but Randorf with a grimace on her face looks to be doing all right. Have some extra time to rest as Grimes commits yet another error. Now you get Kenny Hill at the service line, and we've talked about some of her, you know, inconsistencies in, in, in the serving department. It isn't really a natural server, so already has a couple errors so far. Merzik receives. Here's the set from Grimes. Back to Merzik. And back to Jess business. Merzik. Jess Merzik gets her 10th kill of the night. It really does feel like it's just business for, for Jess Merzik, the way she just goes about it. Just so calm, cool, and collected. No, no amount of her is flustered in any situation. It feels like she is just so incredible. 
Penn State the first to 15 here in this second set as they were in the first. Will they be able to close out the second set in a way they would like to see? Or will Northwestern go up two sets to none? All season long. And she's just a freshman phenom. And just, you see the, the, you know, the, the accolades for her there, but she has filled into this Penn State squad. Big questions, obviously, about Matt Pedraza this year, who was really able to do so much for them offensively as the setter last season. But how good has Izzy Stark been? Leads the Big Ten assist, second in assist per set. Stark comes from a volleyball family, is back out of the timeout. Northwestern scores off the air. It's mentioning what Izzy Stark's family has been able to contribute to this volleyball world. Her mom played at Texas, her dad played at Ball State, her older sister's on this team with her. So she's very comfortable playing in state college. But with the Cats down three, Lauren Carter, another setter, serves away for the Cats, and Merzik is undeniable right now. That's her 11th kill of the evening. And that's just such a challenging play. Make that now, well that's 12 kills. It's 15 straight matches with double digit kills for Jess Merzik. In the past 14, yeah, Penn State's won all of those matches. Sense a trend. Look at what Penn State's been able to do in kill numbers. 11 for Merzik, seven for Cameron Hanna. Northwestern's leader is Buse Hazan with five. Merzik serves, makes it tough for Hazan. And here's Rousseau, the lefty. Hannah with a tip. Carter chases it forward. They go to Rousseau again. And a good dig, but an overpass. Valdudo, the reception there. Hazan had a nice swing, but Grimes is able to keep it up somehow. One-handed set from Carter to Rousseau, and this point still going. Off the slide is Hop. Point Penn State as the block goes out. And that's just such a challenging play, Northwestern. It felt like they were just on the second half, always on the defensive in that rally. It's, it's so tough, especially with Penn State's offensive grittiness and, and ability, um, and, and just an unlucky deflection off of Griffith there. It just feels like the ball has not bounced her way. Rolled on top of the net as well. Tough reception, Carter cleans it up, and Wright gives it free. Stark tried to dump. But the net got in her way. And it's, it's a little tough for someone like Stark. She's 6'1", which, which is tall, but not quite like the Alexa Russo 6'3", six, six, where it's much easier to go on to. It's the couple times tonight where she, she hasn't quite been able to, to find her way over. Offensive firepower and Hazan trying to trigger back into play for the Cats. But they don't have an answer right now to Cameron Hanna as Penn State extends their lead to five. On the floor for the Nittany Lions, Menger serving, Merzik, Valdudo, Stark, Trammell, and Hanna. Serves deep. Here's Reed on the near side over everybody. The Cats wanted the touch, they don't get it. And especially in, in, in situations where you're down five, now you're down six, and you try and get aggressive, you try and make the home run play, it's really tough. Ryland Reed, a little too much power that time. 19-13 the score, we will step aside. Closing stage of the set two coming up. Will the Lions tie things up? The mistakes are starting to add up a little bit more for the Wildcats, and time's starting to run out for them to make Another miraculous comeback effort. Yeah, you know, you saw, you saw some of the magic in the first set, and we've seen that a couple times this season with Northwestern. Coming out really strong in set number one. You know, took a took a set from Purdue about a month ago. Um, that was in the first set. It came strong against Illinois, won a first set against them too. But it's as you get deeper into these matches, Northwestern typically tends to fade away. That's what's happened here in set number two. So 2013. Nittany Lions in front, Menger keeps serving. Makes it a good one. Reed rolls. Hannah on the other side. Another good kill for Cameron Hannah. That's her ninth. And Jess Murzik, once again, is, is getting most of the talk given that she has 11 kills um, on, on 26 swings. But Cameron Hannah, give her another one. That's her ninth. And it's just this, this two-headed attack, so potent. 
Nine kills, two errors on 16 swings. That's good for a 438 clip. Looking to keep it rolling here in set two. Their team up eight. They go to Trammell out of the middle. Good up from Drew Wright. And the kill from Ryland Reed. They've been going to her time and time again in this second set. She finally breaks through. And she's just got that arm talent. I mean, she's got a live arm. And in situations like that where you need a point, you need a point here or there, Ryland Reed is your player. But I mean, it's it's a big deficit now for, for Northwestern. Trailing seven, you've only got four uh, points really to work with at Penn State at 21. You mentioned earlier, Northwestern looks their best, especially in these tough games in the first set. They were able to come away with a victory there. Maybe that has enough juice for them to put something together here, or at least get a good indicator that set three will be just as competitive. They pick up the point there. It's down to a six point set, second set. It's a high pass. Trammell takes the air right out of that ball and puts it on the floor. And sometimes the high pass can help you because it really helps with the timing between the setter and the middle blocker and it allows you to elevate and attack the ball in a position where the defense can't really get to, uh, especially if the defense is a little late to get over and that's what happened there. Izzy Stark has 22 assists tonight. Reed goes cross court and finds the corner. Just gorgeous, just gorgeous. She's away from the net. Rousseau has to extend that play out to the near side just because she's a little late, a little out of position. And how good is that from Rylan Reed? 22-16 the score. Cats still have a lot of work to do. Off the tip. Reed couldn't get there in time. And Trammell gets another kill. Thought we were gonna get a side of pancakes, but uh, not quite. I guess it's a little late for that, given it's seven o'clock. Yeah, not, not in the mood just yet. There's still a task at hand. But anything can happen on a Friday night. Set point coming up for Penn State. That's an ace point, Penn State. And serving first set Off their third ace of the evening. And you can really feel, I mean, the difference in energy from the first set to the second set, even just looking at the bench for this Penn State squad, night and day, Feels like they found their mojo back. Cameron Hannes had a workout at the service line, and that one gets to her. Wildcats side out, but the backs still remain against the wall. Set point number two here in the second. Penn State looking to even things up at one set apiece. Have to wait a little bit longer as Reed gets the ace. Yeah, and that one just ate up Grimes a little bit. Really nice job by, by, by Ryland Reed. A lot of power on that serve. And Grimes just unable to read it off the bat. Look at the last two points, an error and an ace. This point will end on the kill, but into the, into the pin. And that point will go with Penn State. They close set two, 25-18. We are tied at one set apiece. Yeah, you think set one was a blip in the radar. Penn State said no. Just a little bit, had to get the had to get it going. And here in set two, they really find some of that rhythm, some of that success. Take this one 25-18, but it was just, once again, Merzik and Cameron Hanna just so potent in the block too. Both teams hit their locker rooms. Which teams will emerge? Eli Burke, Adam Beck here courtside at Welsh Ryan Arena as we prepare for the start of set number three between Northwestern and Penn State. Nittany Lions coming back down on the floor right now, getting a good look at Alexa Rousseau. And it's been a very active night for the setters on both squads tonight, Adam. Yeah, and you talk about Alexa Rousseau and obviously Stark on the other end. Both of them have done a great job trying to get their teams in positions 
for success. You just look at 24 assists for Stark. Rousseau isn't necessarily just that pure setter anymore. Northwestern has to use her in the kill department as well. That's why she's got four kills, one, one kill for Stark. But Rousseau just doing a little bit of everything. Stark's been really impressive too, though. Let's take a look at the stats through the first two sets as well. As we mentioned, things are split. One set apiece. We will see at least four sets tonight. It's a matter of who will win it is the question at hand. Penn State is a team hitting 343, Northwestern 237. And it's those aces that have really started to add up for the Cats with five compared to the Nittany Lions three. Still a brief pause as Penn State gets situated on their end of the floor, but Drew Wright and the Wildcats are ready. If you're just joining us, Northwestern took the first set 25-23. Penn State handled the second 25-18. Here we go in the third. Merzik is denied to open things up. And they'll go the opposite way to Gura Vicious. And another block, a loud point to start set three for Northwestern. And that's just what Northwestern does. It's their strong suit. The block, how physical up front they are. And not one, but twice on that point, impacting the play. First it was Rousseau and Hill, then it was Hill with the block. It's just what the Cats do up front. It's Hill's third block of the night. Here's Merzik. That one falls on Northwestern's side. Merzik gets the break, but either way it goes is her 12th kill. It feels like every time Merzik gets the break, but even then on that play, you've got Russo and Kendi Hill once again in the play, in the right spot. Just the bounce, the roll, not cat friendly. Well, I guess it was cat friendly, just Nittany Lion friendly. Getting to our classifications of animals here in the third set. You're in for a good one tonight. Scrambling around the Northwestern side. A bump set from Rousseau to Reed. Trying to kick save it, but it goes underneath the net. Point, Penn State. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see how Penn State comes out here. Obviously, after taking set two, 25-18, you drop the first set. But this is a Penn State team that is ranked number three in the country, and they're ranked number three in the country for good reason. Here's Reed. They keep going back to her. Northwestern's calling for the touch, and they get it. Looks like the crowd of Wilson Ryan couldn't even believe it until the announcement was made. Yeah, it took a sec, but finally 2-2 then. You see the touch. That's a close play. Don't know if Jordan Hopp agrees, but. No challenge given. Merzik doesn't matter. I feel like I should slow down on how many times I announced how many kills Merzik has. Yeah, you might, I'll run out of numbers soon enough. Yeah, you might want to like rest the vocal cords a little bit too. You know, you've you got a game to call. Yeah, for those of you counting though, it is 13. Penn State leads 3-2, make it 4-2 off the ace from Ava Faldudo. Yeah, and things starting to really turn around for Penn State after the conclusion of that second set where they really found success in the second half of it after Northwestern led early. Valduto, one of four Nittany Lions players, calls Illinois home. Making a homecoming of sorts from Elmhurst. There's enough scramble at the net. Penn State continues to fend off their side. Reed, powerful swing. Penn State just shoots it back, and Wagner's there to cover. Hill finds the middle of the floor and picks up the kill. Kendi Hill just owns the middle of the floor time and time again. Such an underrated player in this conference in terms of what she can do defensively, but also offensively. And you see there, the defense a little late to get there. Hill reacts well and just dumps it over Hop. That's tough. Hop, really tall player at 6'2". A low serve from Reed, a really good one at that. And some miscommunication. Hop just forces it back over. Randorf off the slide, good to see her back up and moving with full power, but it's an attacking error going against number 18. And that's a, that's a tough play for her, especially as somebody that's more of a traditional outside hitter, who doesn't necessarily, you know, you're not, you're not really in the situation of slide all the time, um, but that time just opens her body up a little too much and then pushes out of bounds. Merzik, quick serve, Zahn pops it up. She'll get the third. And it's shut down by a good blocking effort by Hop. That time she gets around it, but Faldudo is there. Off the roll is Hannah. Rousseau keeps it up. Bazan, good cover from right off the block. Off the set from Hill, Randorf puts it over. Hannah unloads. 
It's kept alive, but nobody home to receive the set. And the Cats are back within one. And once again, who's at the middle of trying to figure out a way for Northwestern to get back into it? It's Kennedy Hill. Make it impact play after impact play. Jordan Hopp couldn't quite come up with it on, on that side. And it's Kennedy Hill in the middle once again. No rest for Kennedy Hill. She serves this point away. She'll have to do it again. Another good block. Katherine Randorf gets up there. That's her third block of the evening. And that's something she's really developed as she's you know, grown and, and, and developed in this Northwestern program. A, a player that was on the All Big Ten freshman team uh, a couple of years ago as, as a true freshman and, and now is trying to figure out how to you know take that next lead take that next level and in terms of her ability defensively she's really gotten there kennedy hill just committed her third service error of the evening gives penn state the lead back at six to five still early here in the third We're guaranteed to see a fourth set as well menger goes right at navarette Hazan with a good swing, but a better up from Faldudo. Another good dig, this time from Drew Wright. Hazan with the kill. It is loud in here, Adam. It's a big one for Hazan, sixth of the evening. She had eight light last time out against Nebraska. And this Northwestern attack really balanced. Got five players with three or more kills compared to the Penn State model of, let's just feed Cameron Hanna and Jess Merzik. Set three is tied at six, awaiting the serve from Carter. Stark shoots set to Trammell. The Cats are ready. Rousseau into the block. It's Taylor Trammell in the middle, the former Boilermaker, gets Penn State back in front. And she's somebody that we haven't talked about enough tonight, just with how good she is defensively, but also offensively, a player that can really rack up kills in the middle. Stark commits the error. Point goes to the Wildcats on the ninth service error of the night for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, it's definitely something that the Nittany Lions will want to clean up. That's not textbook Penn State volleyball. Hazan serves for the Cats. Picks up the ace. Cats in front. Good service night for Northwestern. That's the sixth ace for the Wildcats. And that's what Buse Hazan does, coming uh, from South Florida. She's somebody that's so dominant at the service line. That one a little too hot. And we've seen service error by Penn State, Cage Northwestern, error by Northwestern. What's to follow here off the serve from Cameron Hanna? Who knows? Well, the, you know, the pattern might say one thing, but I think Cameron Hanna probably has other ideas. I think that streak gets broken for my money's worth. And it does. But the point doesn't last long. Jura Vicious on the block, getting Trammell involved as well. And when you've got Jura Vicious and, and Trammell up front, just so much length and height for this Penn State squad makes it really difficult for Northwestern, especially if you're out of system. Jura Vicious, the red shirt freshman from Cleveland, Ohio. Had a phenomenal year in this season. Roll shot from Reed is good enough for the kill. Penn State looks a little bit all out of sorts on the back end. Last couple of points, you know, you see Jess Merzik get targeted a couple of times, had the error and serve receive. And that time unable to, to quite get over there, just a little bit out of sorts on that back end. Reed now leading her team with seven kills on the night. Merzik is Penn State's leader, and that swing shows why, but it's kept up. Rylan Reed continues to stretch her lead, though, on Northwestern's end. And the Cats overall had a 10-9 advantage. And that play all starts with the dig from Drew Wright. And defensively, she has just gotten so much better than what we saw from her last year, continuing to develop match in and match out as the season has progressed. Drew Vicious, far side, got the touch, tied at 10. Talk about a tight back and forth affair. I mean, 
really felt like after that second set, maybe Penn State would slip away. They've got the talent, they've got that kind of team. But Northwestern is playing some gritty volleyball. And the longer this goes, the more back and forth it is, that you just got to figure those Wisconsin Badger fans are smiling, knowing that they have a matchup against this Penn State team tomorrow night, tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a 2.30 Central uh, first first set, you know? That's, that's something you got to keep on in the back of your mind for, from a Penn State perspective. Also, like, hey, in, in 18 hours, you got to go do this again. You saw it, Rylan Reed pick up her ninth kill on that point as well. And Merzik back to business with her 14th. And in terms of maybe, maybe using the bench a little bit more for Penn State too to keep people fresh for tomorrow's big bout against the Badgers. But obviously, you know, you're in a, a match that is quite literally tied right now. 1-1 and 11-11 in the set. Hale trying to put an end to that. Northwestern has it back. Another good dig in the back row this time from Grimes, who has to send it over. Right, Rousseau, Hill gets the kill. Kendi Hill is in the zone right now. He probably takes two hands to count the amount of impact plays she has made in this third set alone. Time boomsticks one for the kill. The serve from Reed. Merzik trying to ride the hot hand. They'll go back to her. Got another piece of it was Kennedy Hill. Here's Hazan off the far side. Kept up. Merzik just forcing it down with authority. And the thing that you don't really see with Jess Merzik because you see her swing it powerfully, but she is just so crafty. If she's a tiny bit off tempo, that time can't quite get a swing to it. She's able to really be able to put that ball in any place she wants. Her offensive arsenal is just so versatile. You know, what, what it makes, it, it's exactly what makes her just so dangerous for this Penn State squad. Now she serves for the Nittany Lions. Randorf takes the swing. And it's Hannah on the block. Yeah, it's just really challenging when you've got Hop and Hannah right in front, roofing that. See another angle of it there, just, yeah, no. Absolutely not, they said. Still the slimmest of margins for Penn State as that serve for Merzik caught the tape. Hazan brings it back to a tied third set, 13 apiece. That is all rhythm on that far side. Beautiful set. Hazan elevates, powers one down. We've got another tie here, 13-13. Now Hill set a tough night from the service line, clears that one. And Hop unloads with the swing. Northwestern out of system, able to get it over. Hannah with speed, but Navarrete's there. Rousseau, far corner dump. Finds the floor! Wow, what a play by Rousseau on that back side. Just two-hand push shot, finds the back corner. That is what a veteran grad student leader does. It doesn't always look pretty. That time, quite ugly with the two hands, but just awesome placement. Here's the Cats' answer with Fruse Hazan. It's a two-point lead for Northwestern. And you can really start to feel kind of the momentum in this crowd getting into it, starting to get to their feet a little bit here. I mean, this is this is really impressive stuff from Northwestern, a team that you know really struggled against Nebraska last time out and found a way to battle after that second set and come back now have a lead here in set three. We've hit the media timeout here in set number three. 15-13, Cavs in front. They look to keep it going on the other side of this break. Thank you. 
They're now up by four. But you look at Katie Schumacher, Collie is from the area. The coach that she inherited this program from, Russ Rose, he's from around here too. They don't have the time to enjoy almost this homecoming feeling because there's so much more on the schedule. And yeah, you also have like four or five players on the roster that are from the greater Chicagoland area. But you know, this is just what Big Ten Volleyball is. It's day in, it's day out, as finally Penn State finds a way to get one back. But don't look now, Northwestern up three. They get a good block there, and mentioning that Katie Schumacher Colley is from the Chicago area, went to Mother Macaulay High School. That's the same school that Gigi Navarrete went to on Northwestern. Plenty of good volleyball production out there over the years and continuing to put out great talent. But here at Welsh Ryan is a three-point third set. Manger serving to Navarrete. Randorf rolls. Stark keeps it up. Here's Hannah. Had a run up to it. Navarrete on the dig. Hazan unloads and puts it down. Just a howitzer from Hazan there. Smashes one home for the kill. And you really start to feel this crowd getting into that energy. Cats right back up by four again. You see another angle of it there. Just too much power for Penn State to handle. 18-14 the score. That one just getting over the knee for the cat point. Lions answer back well. Trammell on a one ball set. Puts it right back down. That's a nice play by Trammell to go off the Griffith block. Solo block there uses that to her advantage as Griffith was a little to her right. And now Stark. Makes it tough for Navarrete and Carter, but Hazan cleans it up. Buse Hazan gets her 10th of the night. Talk about a sliding set from Lauren Carter. That's just textbook stuff of, of how you do it when the ball's just not in the right place. Oh, that's great stuff from Lauren Carter. And Northwestern, you know, when you've got two setters in Carter or Rousseau, uh, it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Carter does a really nice job on that play. Hazan with the service error. And the Lions are still in it. They set no means from over. I mean, Northwestern trailed by a similar margin in the first set and was able to come back. It's the Penn State squad, you know, three-point set here. You've got the talent on the floor. I mean, they're going to try and find Jess Merzik here. You need a point, you need a kill. That's who you go to. Here's Reed on the far side. Too far. Beyond the boundary, and it's a two-point set. Yeah, and also if you're Northwestern, as you call timeout here, that's a smart timeout. Just cut any potential Penn State rhythm of getting back into it. You've got to be smart here, especially trying to extend this match. Got a player like Cameron Hanna on the service line. Nineteen seventeen here in the third set. Northwestern holding a slim advantage thanks to the efforts of Buse Hazan and Rylan Reed. Nineteen combined kills between the two of them. Yeah, and you talk about Buse Hazan, who's really found a way to be productive and efficient tonight. Four hundred attack percentage. That is a lightning quick for her. Ten kills, nine for Rylan Reed. Saw it on the graphic. Those two are absolutely killing it. But so is Cameron Hanna off the service line with her third ace of the night. Nineteen, eighteen, the score. The best server for the Lindy Lions tonight keeps it going, but commits the error. The Cats are first to twenty here in set three. It's just huge, especially being that first team at twenty in terms of momentum, in terms of how you're able to finish five points away. Oh, Northwestern, the momentum is on their side right now. Five of the toughest points to pick up, and we've seen the battle so far in the first two sets. Merzik receives the serve and she'll get ball three. Good up from Reed. She'll get the swing, the block goes out. The Cats just need four more. And that's a tough play for Penn State given that Trammell's in the right place, Jurovicius in the right spot to make a play. Just awkward bounce off the block and goes Northwestern's way. And right now that's how the ball's falling. Right, continuing to serve for the Cats. Puts it up high for Merzik. Dura vicious into the block and finds the floor. A good swing, a powerful one to end on Northwestern side of the net. 
I feel like we're going to get a, see a very similar end to this set that we did in the first set. How things are getting close. May not all have it at once, too, as Grimes commits on yet another error. Penn State holds both of their timeouts. Tim Nolan still has one of his. Yeah, and you've got to wonder how those are used here down the stretch. Obviously, such a critical third set with it tied one, one apiece. It's on the hands of Rousseau, 22-19. Go to Merzik. She finds Wagner, easy enough. Read into the block. Hop, get up there. Two points set. You can feel the tension here at Welsh Ryan. Back in play. Wright receives the serve. Hill takes the swing. And it's kept up. Merzik is denied. But Wagner tried to pop it up high enough. Score back within one. Merzik's never denied. Even if she puts it, even if Northwestern finds a way, somehow there's a magic with Merzik. Merzik's tightening up. Merzik's next swing will be her 40th of the night. Northwestern has the chance to get there first. Tough play, but Hill's able to send it over. Here's Merzik. There's kill number 17, and this set's tied at 22. Talk about 17 kills on 40 swings, just one error for her. Jeez, so tough to defend. That is, square. that is good for a 400 clip, and Penn State is right back in it, scoring three straight. Jess Merzik calls her own number and gets the Nittany Lions right back in it, looking to take a two sets to one advantage. Here in which the game has gone to five sets. No guarantee that happens tonight, but just a look at what's at stake. Back in play, Hill takes the swing. Good up from Faldudo. Penn State's defense really finding their mark here in the late stages of set three. As they do it yet again, another good block, and the Nittany Lions now have the lead. Yeah, Jordan Hopp is making impact plays the net. That's two blocks for her and just a spatter of plays where she's really found ways to, to confuse and frustrate this Northwestern attack. Rylan Reed on the far side, good up from Grimes, good recovery from Stark, and Merzik's able to put it over. Another good rally to get to the ball from Penn State's back line, but it's the block for Northwestern that brings it to 23 apiece. And when it matters most, Kennedy Hill is always there. It doesn't matter if it's the defensive end, offensive end. I was expecting Northwestern to maybe try and get her a touch offensively, but that time she's like, hey, I don't need a, a, a touch offensively if I can get it on the defensive side. Somebody's gonna have set point after this one. Who will it be? Merzik wants it to be her team. Northwestern says, hold on. And this point will keep going. Right, Rousseau to Hazan is shut down by Faldudo. Rally still alive. Hazan again, right at Grimes. Here's Merzik. Another great up from Buse Hazan, and she'll get the third ball. Sends it deep. Just a bit beyond the boundary. Set point coming up for Penn State. And it's so tough to judge that distance when you're a little bit off the net, trying to attack that backside, end the rally, and now it's set point for Penn State with Merzik at the service line. Merzik yet to record an ace or an error. It's loud in Welsh Ryan. There's the error this crowd was looking for. And that's huge for Northwestern in terms of the momentum goes right back towards the Wildcats. You didn't have to really play any volleyball there. You just had to hope and pray that Merzik's serve was able to be received. That time it goes out of bounds. Now and it's Ken and Kennedy Hill, someone who has struggled tonight at the service line, has two, to be really careful. Two aces, three errors. Make it a third ace is now its set point for the Wildcats. Just that quick sometimes. Penn State has to call timeout, talk things over, settle things down. So we'll keep it here. But wow, talk about Northwestern relentless, staying in it the entire time. 
Just a really fantastic effort from the Wildcats. The first timeout used by Katie Schumacher, Kali. As we were sitting right in front of the play, we could look into Izzy Stark's eyes on that point. She realized way too late that nobody was there to go for it. It had to be her ball. Here it is, just about from our vantage point. Impressive she was able to get a hand on it, but nonetheless, Kennedy Hill gets her third ace of California. 10 kills. Leads Northwestern with Hazan and Reed. Hill not too far behind. This serve goes into the net, and Penn State lives to see another point. It's deflating for Northwestern in terms of you're a point away, and you just bash one into the net there, and it gives Penn State another opportunity to get back into it. But hey, if you're Northwestern, you got to play fundamentally here. You got to make sure you get the, the ball back, get in the system, put a good offensive attack on display. It's the only way you're going to be able to, to beat this Penn State squad. Just because Northwestern lost that last point doesn't mean it got any quieter here. Top reception for Navarrete. Randorf keeps it alive and Rousseau sends it over free. Penn State and System, it's Trammell. Quick work, 26-25, Lions and, out in front. And for both of these teams, the quick set for the middle blocker is just overpowered. That time, Stark to Trammell in the middle, you just can't defend it. Easiest point for Trammell all night long. Another set point for Penn State. Rousseau for Hazan. We're tied again. Buse Hazan is finding another gear for this Northwestern team. Make that 11 kills for her, and you needed that one in such a big moment. Hazan comes through, goes down the line, off of Menger in the back row. 26 all, Catherine Randorf to serve for Northwestern. It's a deep one kept in. Trammell off the tip. Penn State squeaks out of that one. Yeah, and that's a really tough play for Navarrete on the back side because Griffith goes off her on the deflection and you know, Navarrete's trying to get back there, does all she can, but isn't quite able to get it back towards the center of the court. We said this was gonna be a fun night. Another set point for Penn State. They're continuing to attack Navarrete. Hazan just sends it over and finds the floor for her 12th kill tonight. And once again, another huge moment, another huge opportunity, and Hazan is up to it. It, was, it wasn't pretty at all. She's way out of the play, just has to get it over, gets it over, Han over Hannah on the block, and somehow finds its way home. 27-27. Stark for Trammell. They keep going to it, it keeps working. Trammell, Hazan, back and forth we go. That time Trammell goes to Hazan on the defensive side and Hazan couldn't quite keep that up. These Penn State fans in the corner behind their bench are getting a workout going up and down as they keep reaching set point but having to sit back down. Will they be able to finish this one? Rousseau sets up Reed. Grimes is there to keep it up. Merzik, far side, puts it down. And Penn State escapes set three with a 29-27 win. And who but just Jess Merzik, her 18th kill of the evening, and that's what good teams do. That's what great teams do. They face adversity, they find a tough place, they're in a tough spot, you know, battling with Northwestern and finding a way to take that decisive third set. Northwestern, on the other hand, has seen they've been able to hang with the big dogs. 29-27, the final in set three. Penn State goes up two sets to one by the slimmest of margins. Set four coming up. Stay with us as we get ready for what could be the finish, or if Northwestern decides they're not done playing yet, a do or die fifth set. Two sets to one, Penn State in front. Set four coming up. Um, they should be dominating these kinds of matches, and it's impressive Northwestern's been able to keep up. And you can see on that graphic, four of those six games ended in sweeps. The and the only time Penn State's lost, they ended up getting swept by Pitt, giving them a 12-1 run record in matches this year that end in three sets. For ones that go longer, they're 10-0. Northwestern, on the other hand, just 2-8. and eight. So the odds definitely favor Penn State as this goes deeper. But as this match goes deeper, Wisconsin Badger fans are continuing to smile, knowing they're going to get an increasingly tired Penn State roster. Yeah, 
unbelievable turnaround for this Nittany Lions squad having to trek up to Madison for tomorrow's match. But the further Northwestern can make this a make this a make this a tango, I mean, you know those people up in Madison are going to be loving it. Northwestern looking to push this to a fifth set as they open up the scoring first off the hands of Rylan Reed. Good for her 11th kill of the night. Angelica Stark receives that serve, and Jess Merzik picks up yet another kill. That's 19th. Yeah, I mean, you said you were gonna get tired of counting at this point, but you're still going at it. I took a little break. I, had, I gotta keep checking back in every now and then. She's just that kind of player, though, in terms of 20 kills on a night. It, it's really, it's quite easy for her. And there's Hill with a big swing. Better dig from Stark, able to send it over. Prevented it from going out was Drew Wright, and now we're back in play. Tough set from Stark having to slide for it, and Catherine Randorf cleans it up. And what's been really impressive about this Northwestern team, still obviously early in set four, but throughout the season, you know, when they win early on and maybe a, a, an opponent comes back and finds a way to, to, to even a match, you typically set, see them fade. Northwestern hasn't faded. They were with Penn State in that third set, have started this set four pretty strong too. Jura Vicious with a big swing and a better dig from Reed. Hazan with the roll and Merzik recovers. Randorf for Rousseau, looking for Hill. Tip to the middle and Grimes is there. Merzik off the touch. And I'll give you the update on this one. That's her 20th kill of the night. It's just been that kind of night for Jess Merzik in terms of, and it's been, it's been kind of a quiet 20 kills too, if, if that's even possible. Um, you know, it feels like she's just been in the flow of the offense, in the rhythm. It hasn't always been pretty for her. She's had, of course, a couple of those Jess Merzik-esque kills, um, but just racking them up now. One-handed set from start goes right back to Merzik. Making it tough for the Cats as the Lions grab the lead. You think she's going to have time to ice her, her shoulder after this one? I think that bus ride to Madison will feature plenty of ice. They'll keep her ready no matter what it takes. Hazan trying to send it over. Penn State got the touch and Northwestern refreshes their set. Off the slide. Hop was shut down. Point Northwestern. Yeah, the first three sets are any indication of what we've got going on in set number four. Um, you can see it's 3-3 it's three, three early. It's just been that kind of night back and forth all night. Really hasn't been you know, one team finding a way to get out ahead of another except that set two. There is a challenge on the floor. They thought that there was a touch at the start of the play. It, there could be a couple instances here. One on the finishing swing, another when Northwestern failed to get it over the net but was able to regroup and send it back over because the additional call at the net was that there was a touch and Northwestern could do it three fresh ones. And so Penn State going to the challenge, seeing those different, different opportunities there. Schumacher Kali won her first challenge tonight that came all the way back in the first set where it was a swing to give Penn State the lead and they said the Northwestern ultimately won. Here it is again. Caught the touch, that one escaped outside. Don't know if there's too much there. We get another look at this net view. And, and that's why I'm leaning to think it was more about the situation earlier in the point where there could be a potential four touches call against Northwestern. Doesn't look like anyone got in the net either for the Wildcats. Yeah, that angle definitely a little bit closer, but it, it looked like that arm was, was above and didn't quite touch. There is Schumacher Colley. And, and obviously you saw the net move, but that's because the ball hit off the pin and, and net situation on that near side. Northwestern trying to stay loose. And we've seen tonight when they're playing loose and relaxed, they're playing at their best, being able to handle or hang in there with the number three team in the land. Yeah, and it's really impressive, especially with what happened, you know, last Sunday against Nebraska, a Nebraska team that came in here and, and simply dominated. And, and that's what Nebraska does. That, that's what Nebraska volleyball is all about. But in terms of throwing that away, coming back here, facing a, a team just ranked one, uh, you know, one away from where Nebraska is, number two versus number three, and Northwestern has been night and day. And when you look at what Nebraska's been able to do this season, they don't just sweep the bottom of the barrel opponents in the Big Ten or the teams that are looking to rebuild. They played Oregon 
this week and swept them very handily as well. And you gotta figure maybe it's just something in the crowd that Nebraska brings. It feels like a sellout crowd follows them wherever they go. That matchup took place in Eugene and there were Husker fans that drove the distance all the way to the Pacific Northwest. They make every game feel like it's that much more important and they ride the momentum. We've seen it happen tonight with the crowd here at Welsh Ryan helping guide Northwestern to a set win. And they're now back on the floor. There was a four touches call. Point goes to Penn State. It was for the situation that happened earlier in the point, not on the final swing. And that's now a, I'll take a breath. And that's a good eye from you, Eli, there, because, you know, obviously that, that play at the net looked like it could have been something, but uh, coming earlier in the point. So instead of a 3-3 tie, it's a 4-2 Nittany Lion lead. Ava Faldudo back on to serve. Randorf unloads. Good up from Grimes. Merzik kept up by Hazan. Hawk tried to clean it up, but it went into the net. Point, Northwestern. Yeah, you can see Kennedy Hill screaming for that one as soon as it happened. Now she goes to the service line. Now it's Hill, three aces, three errors. Clip the tape, Valduto was there. Off the slide, it's Hop. Got the point. And we mentioned this earlier in the match, but obviously Sarah Griffith in the middle of the floor uh, for Northwestern, really playing in her fourth game of the season. Um, and, and she seems like she's starting to get into it a little bit more of a rhythm. Step slow there, but, but she's in the right spots time and time again. Rousseau with a tough set for Randorf. It's kept alive. Hazan was in the right spot. Another good block from Penn State. Stark and Hop get up there. And this rally stays alive. Here's Hannah into another block. She'll try again. Wright was there. Randorf far side. She pops one over. Hannah with increased speed caught the corner. Point Penn State. And this is where Penn State's offensive guns are really going to start to show. You know, late in a match, you want to go home. Well, I guess you want to go up to Madison. Uh, you, you turn to your best players in, in, in Merzik. You turn to Cameron Hanna. Taylor Trimmel also with 10 kills. Three Nittany lines in double-digit kills. Rousseau back set for Randorf. She jumped too far in front of it. Couldn't regroup in time, and Penn State leads by four. Tim Nolan calls his first timeout. And that's the right time to call a timeout, especially as the Nittany Lions open up that four-point edge. It's really now or never for Northwestern to claw back in. We'll step aside, 7-3. Nittany Lions out in front. Northwestern looking to correct their mistakes and send it to a fifth. Wisconsin game coming up. They then go home for Illinois, and then just some appetizers before the feast on Black Friday. We look ahead to that one on November 29th at 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern. Likely a battle for the Big Ten title right now. Both teams undefeated in the standings. Yeah, it's just poetic justice that this is the last match of the season for both of these teams. Penn State, Nebraska, top of the standings right now. Nebraska at 13-0, Penn State at 12-0, would move to 13-0 with a win tonight. Oh, that would be so fun at the end of this campaign. But first, Penn State has to get out of Evanston. Currently on track to do so, leading by four here in set number four. Hazan from the back row makes it tough. But Hannah returns the favor. Hazan again. There's her 13th kill of the night. Busey Hazan says, hey, don't forget about me. I can get some of those kills as well. Second most in this match. Merzik has the most with 21, but 13th for Hazan. Starting to see a bigger workload, too. Now it's Carter. Kicking up the ace. Been a while since Northwestern seen one of those. It was the, near the end of set three. They got one from Kennedy Hill. Carter getting the catch back in it. They're down two. And Tim Nolan has to be ecstatic about that timeout because you're down 7-3. You get back two points in a row. And those serves continue to stay tough. 
Good block there from Rousseau. This one's free. Carter, Rousseau, Hazan off the tip. Valdudo keeps it alive. From the back row into the net was Merzik. Was there a touch? They say play on. Now the point goes to Northwestern. And Griffith was adamant that there was no touch there. It didn't look like there was. Definitely a close play at the net. But Northwestern, three-point run. Tim Nolan, super active on the sideline. Sometimes you see him be a little bit more quiet. He's, he's always in that range by the Northwestern sideline. But he, he's been really active tonight, especially getting his team ready. They tried to work the slide with Hop, but she got too far underneath it, and this set is tied at seven. Four straight points for the Wildcats out of the timeout. And for a team that is more is is pretty young. I mean, obviously Alexa Rousseau, graduate student, but you, you look at the players on, on the court for the Cats, no seniors. This this is the kind of match where you find some something about your program, how you can compete against the best teams in the country. Hannah breaks the tie with an authoritative swing. Was tired of getting blocked. And she figured going cross court's the best way. Yeah, and sometimes it is. You'll see another angle there. Goes cross court. Target's right on that near side. So now changing up the pace is Quinn Manger. Hazan looks to get the serve back for the Cats. She'll have to wait. Merzik back row. Good dig from Navarrete. Was on cross court. Valdudo sends it sky high. Hannah to Navarrete. And this rally keeps going. Not for much longer as the block gets sent right back at Hazan. That's just really nice job from Stark blocking there. The setter, she's been really impressive, obviously, in the assist department tonight with a good amount of those. 42 and 49 last time out, closing in on that figure again. Had four blocks last time out, has three tonight. Back to Manger at the service line. 9 7 Lions lead. Cats cut into it though. Hazan with kill number 14. On the floor for Northwestern, Griffith, Rousseau, Reed, Carter, Wright, and Hazan to serve. Fresh off that kill. The transfer from Istanbul. Spent her time at USF. As Northwestern's able to tie this set at nine. Also, Sarah Griffith spent some time as undergrad at USF as well before transferring to DePaul. So maybe there's a pipeline from the Tampa area here at Evanston. Yeah, it's really interesting, USF, South Florida, Tampa, don't know if that considers as South Florida. You would know better than anyone here. There's an error committed by Hazan. Penn State re-grabs that lead. In for the Cats, Lily Wagner, off the court for the Nittany Lions, Caroline Turofish is serving Easy Stark. On the floor for the Lions, Stark, Grimes, Merzik, Trammell, Hannah, and Juravicious. Powerful lineup, one that's won them a lot of games. Reed looking to break through them. And they just have the reflexes to cover all spots on the floor. Rousseau finds an open space though, and ties this fourth set at 10. She's just so dangerous with that left hand because what she's able to do on that far side, open up her body, goes cross court there. And especially with Buse Hazan taking a seat here. Actually, she's standing on the, or no, she actually is taking a seat rest of the bench is standing. Um, you know, it's, it's really Rousseau and Rylan Reed as the, as the two offensive options here. From the near side is Cameron Hanna. Different Cameron spot, Hanna same result. That's her 12th kill. Hanna now set to serve. She has three aces and three of Penn State's 12 service errors. Make that four. And you know, you keep on looking at the scoreboard expecting at some point Penn State to pull away, but it's just not happening. It feels like that second set was almost the blip in the radar. It was gonna say, normally, if, if 
you've been watching enough Northwestern this year, you've seen a really good first set, and then them start to drop off a little bit more in the third and fourth as Rousseau picks up the ace. A great spot down that near line. Cats lead 12-11, but as you mentioned, now that second set where they lost 25-18 looks a bit uncharacteristic in the greater context of this match. Rousseau, another good serve at Angelina Stark. Merzik is denied by guess who? Kennedy Hill. Randorf gets up there as well, and it's 13-11 Northwestern. It's actually so incredible how much Kennedy Hill dominates at the net. And this is a Northwestern team that averages a little over two blocks per set, 95th in the country in that stat. And it's a team that really has put its defensive fundamentals on that I ideal. Randorf gets denied by Merzik. Anything you can do, I can do better, goes through the minds of Jess Merzik, and it's a one point four set. And typically when Jess Merzik says that, she can do it better. Looking through Merzik's line tonight, 21 kills on 56 swings, four digs, three blocks. Here's Hill, got underneath it. Wasn't the shot she was looking for, but it, it certainly works. Attacking error against Penn State. Point Northwestern. Nittany Lions are calling for a touch. Let's see if Katie Schumacher Kali goes to the challenge. And she does. Yeah, she's going to ask for it here. But you know, you mentioned Kendi Hill. He couldn't quite get the touch on that play. Uh, it's still Northwestern's best bang for their buck play. Every time, quick set to Kendi Hill in the middle. Couldn't quite get enough of it, but if she gets more power, I mean, that's an automatic kill every time. Interesting for, for Penn State to go challenge this here. You know, it makes sense in, in, in a match that is as tight as it has been tonight and Northwestern with the lead. Penn State's had two challenges go successfully in their favor already tonight. One of them was in this fourth set. If they win this one, which we'll have to see another look. It was a very tough play at the net to make the call. But if they win this one, instead of a 14-12 score, it would be tied at 13. Yeah, and that makes all the difference in a match that has been of razor-thin margins tonight. It's, it, it's a moment where if you're Penn State, you, you've got to challenge every point. You've got to keep this thing close. Because Northwestern, you know, if this gets to five sets, really anything can happen in, in, in the race to 15. You see it right now on the scoreboard, how, how the Cats lead. Obviously, that, that would be a tied a, a, a tie fourth set if, if this goes the other way. If this does go Northwestern's favor and they are able to win this fourth set, it'll be their first five set appearance on September 26th in the conference opener at Maryland. That game they won featuring a triple double from Alexa Rousseau. Tonight, 19 assists, six kills, six digs. We're still monitoring that, but looking that's looking a little too far ahead as we reach the verdict. This point will go to Northwestern. The first failed challenge of the night to Katie Schumacher Colley. And now with Hazan back on the floor, you expect uh, you know Rousseau to go back to more of that traditional setter role. You've got Randorf there as the two real attacking options, Kennedy Hill in the middle. You also have Ryland Reed obviously serving too. Reed serves it back in play. Merzik camping underneath, they got the tip, and Hill cleans up her own deflection. Randorf sends it over, Juravicius was there. Merzik, quick reflection by Hazan to keep it in. Merzik again goes down the line, and Rousseau's there. Here's Randorf on the far side, Cats by three. And this time off the block, it doesn't matter when you hit the ball hard and you challenge the block, you know, it, it makes it really tough on opposing defenses, and that's exactly what Randorf does, who's off the block of Hop and Merzik on the far side, gets the kill. Been a back and forth night for Randorf, as well as for both teams from the service line, is yet another error is committed by Northwestern. That's the 11th for the Cats. But looking at Randorf, five kills, four errors, but going back and forth between a positive and zero clip. And it truly feels like the the serving tonight's been the wild card in, in a really tightly contested match of volleyball. I just feel like anytime one team gets too far out in front, you know, the serving comes back to bite them. Attacking error against Hill. Too much smoke on that swing. And Katz held a three-point lead here in this set that's down to one. 
Valdudo back into play. And Drew Wright eats that serve. Hazan takes the swing, caught the touch. Point Northwestern. Hazan with 15 kills. And that's what professional scorers do. You, you realize it can't be clean every time. Realizes she doesn't have the angle to go cross court. Goes down the line, goes off the block, and that's a kill. And that's just how it works sometimes. You've got to be crafty at the net, especially in the Big Ten. And that's what Busey Hazan is continuing to do. Tough reception for Faldudo. Has to result in a back row swing for Merzik. Hazan stays hot, restores that three-point lead for the Wildcats. And that time goes in between the block. You know, Hop a little late to get over, goes right at her. You'll see it there. Hop and Stark on the near side and just taking advantage. Hill with a good service night. It keeps going. Overpass. Hazan looking for three in a row, but gets shut down. Hop and Stark. Izzy Stark get that block for Penn State in a point where they just really needed it. And the difference on that side is because from the set didn't come just too far from the middle. It was kind of close to the to that left side. It allowed Penn State to set itself defensively, time up the block, and just an easy play for that Penn State squad. Rousseau comes back to it. Hazan cross court. Can feel the wind on that one. Speaking of powerful swings, there's Hannah getting the touch and scoring for Penn State. And similarly on the other end, Penn State using the block effectively. Cameron Hanna going right at Randorf and Griffith in a good spot defensively, just off the block and out of bounds. It's going to be a Penn State point. Once again, Northwestern had a three-point lead erased, down to one. Merzik serving. Tough one for Northwestern. Griffith able to send it over. Joust stayed up. Hazan underneath it. Good up from Faldudo. All over the place on this near sideline. And Penn State has been able to tie this set at 17. And time and time again, Penn State is showing that they are gritty. They are deep. They're finding ways to stay in it time and time again. And, you know, it sounds funny to say that about a number three team in the, in the country, but these are the kinds of matches where you really learn about what kind of squads, you know, you've got at the, at the top of, you know, the volleyball rankings. Here's Hazan again into the block. Izzy Stark gets mobbed by her teammates in Penn State leads. And you can really see the difference of, of Stark and Hoff. This time they found the timing once again after their earlier block, finally catching on to Buse Hazan on that left side. 18-17, Tim Nolan spends his final time out. Can his team come back and push it to a fifth set? Or will this be all she wrote for Penn State? They lead by one here in the fourth. If I had a nickel every time I said Jess Merzik or Buse Hazan, I would be a rich, rich man. They have been all over the place for both these teams tonight. Combined 37 kills between them. 21 for Merzik, 16 for Hazan, and they've just been so impressive. Merzik, especially early. Hazan of late has really kept Northwestern in big moments, in big situations, especially in set three, in set four as well. It's been Northwestern's go-to. Here is Merzik serving to Hazan. Back in play with Penn State leading by one. A good dig from Merzik. Keeps the point alive. And now the Penn State advantage is two. Looking to finish this off in four sets. And this is where, you know, a number three team in the nation needs to really find that extra gear. Find that, you know, put the foot on the gas pedal and, and end things while you're up to 1917. You can't really allow Northwestern to get back into it because the way that they've used the momentum of the crowd, it's been scary tonight. Griffith off a good... Quick set from Rousseau, able to save it from going over. And she recovers well. Here's Hazan near side with her 17th kill of the night. Just continuing to impress. That time goes cross body, cross court. Doesn't get it too far, but she doesn't need to get it too far. Once again, just such a professional and crafty score. That one ends a five-point Penn State run. Carter with a good serve. Hannah with a roll. Ride the hot hand, why not? Buse Hazan puts it down. Tied at 19. You're gonna get tired of calling her name because you keep saying it. She's just been that good, that dominant. Another impact play from Hazan. 
These teams continuing to match each other exceptionally well tonight. Hannah goes right at Drew Wright. And this point stays alive. Carter bump sets for Rousseau, who shoot sets it across the court. Hannah tries to give Northwestern no further opportunities, but Wright's there again. Merzik wanted it. Hannah's got it, blocked out. Point, Penn State, they're the first to 20 here in the fourth. And Alexa Rousseau's a little frustrated. She felt like she was in that spot right there, but just, just, just a hair late on it. Obviously, ball goes out of bounds. And you know, if you're Northwestern, you gotta dig deep here. You're, you're facing such a talented team, a team that's got power from anywhere on the floor. If you look at Tramlin, you look at Hannah, and obviously Jess Merzik. And this has been a dogfight. Just about 18 hours, Penn State's got another game coming up. They're not out of the clear this one. They lead by one, make it two. Taylor Trammell from the middle gets the point to Penn State. But you look at players like Merzik and Hannah, over 100 combined swings between those two. Not the best recipe for success heading into tomorrow's contest against Wisconsin. Yeah, a lot of ice for them, you'd have to imagine, on the bus ride up. But, I mean, hey, if, if that's what, where you can find offensive success, that's where you're going to find it. Manger picks the ace. Three-point advantage for Nittany Lions looking to shut the door. That's just such a tough break from Gigi Navarrete. And if you're Northwestern, you got to come back here. you got to find a way to get it in serve, receive, get in system, find a way offensively. You've got to put 20 on the board and, and get the ability to serve back. Carter sets up Hazan, and there is 20 for Northwestern. Nice play there, Adam. Gotta always stay you know, on my toes there. One-handed play here. That's 19 kills now for Hazan, or 18, 19 kills. Second most of the season. She's only got one match this season with 20. That was against Long Beach State earlier this year. Has the chance to do it, but not much time if Northwestern can't win this set. She puts a good serve in play. A great swing from Hannah. Good dig from Hazan. Here's Reed near side. The point goes to Penn State. Looks like there may have been a touch, and Tim Nolan might want to put in the challenge card for this one. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it doesn't really matter if it is a touch or isn't a touch. If it's a, even a close play, I feel like you have to re review that with the time and score. Um, you know, I guess, you know, 23-20, it's, it's, it's a must It's a must challenge. It's, it's a chance for a third timeout as well, even if it doesn't go your way. If it stands as it is right now, the score will hold 23-20. If it does flip, it's a 22-21. Penn State still holding the lead, but Northwestern with that serve. Here's how that last play broke down. Did that touch any part of the hair of Cameron Hanna, who had to do a Matrix-like move to get out of the way of that one? See. I thought it might have honestly touched Stark, but it looks like the deflection was off the net. That might be why it looked awkward, and also might be why Ryland Reed thought there was a deflection, just because it hit the net a little bit of a different tra trajectory. From where, from where we're sitting, we have a good look down the net line, and I saw the same thing you did. I thought it got a touch at the top of the net, but on the replay, Stark was away from the ball. It's going to come down to if that touched any part of the long hair of Cameron Hanna. Yeah, and obviously if you're Ryland Reed, you're saying it absolutely does. If you're Northwestern, you're saying 100%. But um, once again, this is why we sit on this side, and uh, there's people that are paid to make these decisions. And they've reached a verdict. Remember, the call on the floor is the point goes to Penn State. It's going to be tough to overturn something like this. But even if, if, if you don't win this point, if you're Northwestern, you have, you have found ways to be gritty. They call the touch, point Northwestern, and it's a one point fourth set with the Cats holding the serve. And Schumacher Cauley is getting an explanation on the far side. Talk, talking to Hannah about it, just smiles. There's not too much you could do there. It was a great play to even get out of the most away of it. Yeah, she was doing uh, the limbo over there. So now with the Cats down one, Busse Hazan with the serve. Stark sets up Trammell right at Drew Wright. And there's the true 23rd point for Penn State. And that's just so tough for Drew Wright. There's really nothing you can do. Because, you know, where she is positioned, it just, just hits her a little too high and super awkward, way too much power. They've gone right at, I mean, I say this a lot, right at Drew Wright. For so much of this game, Wright's still been able to pop up 16 digs. Here she is on the reception, giving up the ace. 
Match point upcoming for the Nittany Lions. And it's on the hands of Izzy Stark. Penn State makes a quick substitution before they get to it. Trammell coming off, coming on, Catherine Burke, the sophomore middle blocker from Glenview. Yeah, went to Loyola Academy, Chicagoland kid. Off the serve from Stark. It's tough for Wagner, but she keeps it up. Reed with the swing and the error. Penn State survives the scare coming out of this one, winning against Northwestern in four fantastic sets. And it was a scare, you know, after that first set, Northwestern came out, won that one 25-23, Penn State won the second one 25-18, but that third set, you know, it just what a set that was, and then Penn State able to close things out in the fourth set, 19 match, Big Ten regular season winning streak, longest active streak in the conference for Penn State. They're going to need that to continue, especially as you look towards the rest of the season, but this Penn State squad, they dug deep, they found a way to win, and that's what great teams get. And Penn State will be tested on that match streak come tomorrow afternoon as they face the Wisconsin Badgers in Madison, but they're going to have to recover quickly from this one. Northwestern took the first set, 25-23. After that, Penn State had to fight tooth and nail to come away with it. 25-18, 29-27, 25-21. The final stat lines, score lines on those Penn State victorious sets. Jess Merzik, 21 kills, six digs, three blocks. Buse Hazan led the way for the catch with 19 kills and seven digs. For our broadcast partner, Adam Beck, and our incredible hardworking crew at Big Ten Plus, my name's Eli Burke. Penn State comes away with a win and a thriller.
Ah, oh, ora, ora.